Hi there, welcome to a video tutorial on finding the vertex of a quadratic relation. In this video, what we're going to do is use a variety of methods to find the vertex of a quadratic, as well as classify that vertex as either a maximum or a minimum. Okay, so just a little bit of review on quadratic relations. So when we graph these things, quadratics look parabolic in shape. Uh, so this is just a quick sketch of a parabola. You can see it's symmetric and it increases forever in the upwards direction. We also have parabolas that decrease forever in the downwards direction. We'll get into that in just a moment. So there are three forms that a quadratic can appear in. So this is standard form. You've definitely seen something like this before. Vertex form. This form is useful. It allows us to pick out the vertex of, uh, of a parabola. And that's something that we're definitely going to see in this in this video. We also have factored form. This form is useful because it helps us pick out the x-intercepts of a parabola. Okay, so the maximum or minimum value of a quadratic happens at the vertex of the parabola. So in this video, we're mainly just concerned with determining the vertex. And we're going to do that using three different methods. So the first one we're going to see is graphing. Uh, we'll use completing the square and using x-intercepts. This is probably my favorite method, and uh, we'll take a peek at that in just a moment. So one quick thing, the, the sign of the coefficient a in a quadratic relation determines whether the vertex is a maximum or a minimum. So for this parabola, this parabola opens upwards, so the a value would be positive. That means that I have a minimum. You can see here this is the lowest point of my, of, of my parabola. It's going to continue forever in the upwards direction, so I don't actually have a maximum. However, if the sign of my a coefficient was negative, my parabola would open downward. And you can see then that I do have a maximum and I do not have a minimum. So just a little bit on the, the coefficient A that's going to be useful for us. Okay, so the first method we're going to use is graphing. I've already just kind of given you a screenshot of a graph done on a graphing calculator. You can see here this parabola opens upwards. You know that the A value is positive, so it's greater than zero. And as a result, the vertex happens to be a minimum. Okay, you can see this thing's going to continue forever in the upwards direction. Therefore, this has to be the lowest the lowest value possible. And you can see the, the coordinates of that point are 2, 1. Okay, so I've got a minimum at 2, 1. The second example, you can see this one opens downward. So we know that we have a negative A value, and we know that there's a maximum at the vertex then. Because uh, this thing opens downward, we know we're going to have a maximum. We won't have a minimum, because remember this thing is continuing forever in the downwards direction. You can see that our maximum occurs at negative 1, three. That's graphing. Uh, not, too, not too tough when you actually have the graph. Uh, when you don't have the graph, it's a little more difficult, but we're not going to do that in this video. All right, so the second method you can use to classify a vertex as a max or min is completing the square. I've done a, a video tutorial on completing the square that you can take a peek at, so I'm not going to go over this uh, method in immense detail here. I will sort of explain the procedure that it's, that's used. Okay, so the first thing you need to do to complete the square is you need to take this b term of your quadratic, remember that's the term in front of x, and you need to perform this procedure. So you need to take the b term, divide by 2 and square it, you get some value here. Okay, and this seems arbitrary, but I promise there is a, a reason for it. Add and subtract it after our b term. And, and remember, if we do that, we haven't changed this expression. 25 minus 25 is, is 0, so we have not done anything to this expression. So the next thing we need to do is just sort of collect our last two numbers. Uh, these are like terms, so we're going to add them together to get negative 20. And I've highlighted this trinomial in green. Uh, and the reason for that is that that trinomial, because we perform this procedure, is now considered a perfect square trinomial. And a perfect square trinomial, you might remember, if you find two numbers that add to get 10 and multiply to get 25, they end up being the same number. So we end up with an expression that looks like this. And if you don't like factoring, there is a little shortcut here. The number that you get when you divide b by 2 before squaring it, that's going to end up being the number that you add after x. So you can just sort of remember this, uh, this form. You've got brackets, you've got a square, you've got an x, you've got a plus, and then you're always going to have some number here. So whatever the number is that you get when you divide b by 2 before squaring it, that's going to be the number that goes right here. Okay, so that's completing the square. So let's classify our vertex. So first of all, we have to pick out our vertex out of this vertex form. Now, it should be pretty easy. Vertex form, remember, exists solely to tell you the, the vertex of the parabola. Uh, so in order to identify the max min, first of all, we have to pick out our vertex. From previous studies, you might remember that your vertex is located at negative 5 
negative 20. And you're thinking, well, why is it negative five? We've got a positive here. That has to do with the fact that this is a, a horizontal translation of a parabola to the left by five units. So when we move to the left from zero, we end up at negative five. So the next thing we have to do is classify this vertex. Well, we know that parabolas that open upwards have a minimum. And we know that this parabola opens upwards because our a value is one, right? There's an imaginary one in front here, it's a positive number. Therefore, our parabola opens upward. We've got a minimum located at negative five, negative 20. All right, so the last method, this is probably my favorite. It's kind of an interesting method. Instead of using completing the square graphing, we're gonna use factoring. Now, if you don't like factoring, this is not gonna be your friend. I'm a firm believer in factoring. I think it's a very useful skill and you're gonna use it throughout your secondary math career. So you might as well get used to it. Uh, so remember with, with factoring, we're gonna find two numbers that add to get to six while also multiplying to get five. What we're gonna do is we're gonna find two numbers that add to get six, multiply to get five. If you think in your head, two numbers that multiply to get five, the only ones I can think of are five and one, and as it turns out, they also add to get six. All right, so we can, we can factor our, our expression. We just open two brackets. Uh, we take our, our magic numbers that we arrived at, and we end up with an expression like this. Okay, so now to get the x-intercepts of a, of a quadratic, where x-intercepts happen when, when y equals zero, right? So we're gonna set y equal to zero, and we're gonna solve for our x-intercepts. We can solve each of these, uh, these binomials individually. So we have an x-intercept at negative five, and we have an x-intercept at negative one. So if I just kind of roughly plot those on, on my grid here, these are very, very approximate, but so this would be, this would be negative five. Over here, I've got negative one. Okay, I know my, my quadratic is gonna pass through these two x-intercepts. And I also happen to know that my quadratic opens up because my a value happens to be positive. All right, so you can imagine, this is a very rough sketch, but a parabola that passes through that x-intercept and also passes through this x-intercept. Now, I'm gonna label what's called the axis of symmetry on this parabola. See that the axis of symmetry divides the parabola into two equal pieces. What it does is if I, if I folded my parabola in onto itself, you would see that it's symmetric over this axis of symmetry. Like I said, this thing cuts the x-intercepts in the middle. Our vertex happens to be right at this point right here. So what I'm going to do to find my vertex is I'm going to essentially find the average of these two numbers. I'm going to add them up, divide by two, and that's going to give me this middle x-coordinate right here. So if I do that, if I take negative five and I add negative one, I've got negative six, divide that by two, I'm gonna get negative three. So I know that my X coordinate of my vertex happens to be negative three. To get my Y coordinate, all I'd have to do is take that X value and substitute it in. Okay, so I'm not gonna show that work, but I take my X value, substitute it in, and you'll see that you get negative four as your Y value. So we know our vertex is located at negative three, negative four. Okay, now in order to classify our vertex, we're gonna take a look at our A value. We know this thing opens up, therefore we have a minimum. That's all there is to it. That's the third method, using your x-intercepts. That's one of my favorites. Uh, but that brings us to the end of the video tutorial. So we looked at a variety of methods. This is the one that you find uh, works best for you. Uh, but just remember, like factoring and completing the square are both useful strategies. You don't wanna ignore those and, and just simply focus on graphing. Uh, those are useful skills for later on in your studies. Hey, thanks for watching.